My name is David Blythe and I am one of the trustees of Drive Mobility and I also manage the William Merritt Disabled Living Centre which you will hear more about later. Drive Mobility is a registered charity supported by and working with the Department for Transport to provide accredited fitness to drive assessments for disabled people, elderly and frail individuals so they can gain or remain driving and independently mobile for longer. We are made up of 20 member organisations covering the whole of the UK with many centres having outreach or satellite facilities. Our members consist of independent charities and NHS centres. Driver Mobility is the sort of umbrella organisation that um, accredits all the mobility centres, so has all the standards for the driving assessments and the way services run. So Driver Mobility's vision is to enable independence for people with disabilities, frailties or long-term medical conditions, just to keep them independently mobile through equipment and driving adaptions and scooters. The main goal of the driving mobility centres is to ensure people can stay independently mobile as long as possible, either gain independence or retain their independence. These centres are, are crucial as, as part of everybody's um, um, will, if you like, to remain uh, independently mobile. Uh, to actually have an assessment to know that you are safe on the road is very valuable because some conditions you may question it. So to be able to come along to it and have a qualified clinician uh, and a, a driving instructor to work with you uh, to actually say yes you are safe to drive on the road can be very valuable. After an assessment at one of the mobility centres we will have a meeting afterwards where they will talk through everything they've gone through the assessment, what adaptions think suitable, whether maybe more driving tuition will be needed, whether that be with new adaptions or just a refresher course, say if you haven't been in driving for long due to an accident, example. Attending a driving assessment is not like taking a driving test. You'll be supported by caring and understanding staff who will put you at ease during the process. To begin, an occupational therapist and an approved driving instructor will discuss your medical condition and how it affects your driving and then decide on the most suitable vehicle to meet your needs. Firstly, we get all the medical knowledge from different professions and then we interview the client to see what their needs are and what their abilities are. We find out what um, car they drive, um, what driving experience they've got. Then we try and match their vehicle so that it's not too different to their own. It doesn't always happen that way, but uh, as near as we can. So if they drive an automatic, we provide an automatic vehicle for them. Um, and then um, we try and put them at ease as much as we can. We explain all the assessment and what it requires. Um, and then on road, try and put them at ease as well. Sometimes um, they do get really nervous, which is understandable. So we can ask them to pull in, just relax, and then we'll start again with the assessment. The William Merritt Centre and all the other driving mobility centres have a lot of different vehicles in different sizes, with different adaptions, also manual and automatic. So even though you don't drive your own vehicle during your assessment, there's lots of options so it can be the closest possible fit to you so you feel comfortable during the assessment. Push-pull hand controls are an adaptation that you would use with your hands. Um, so how they work, more often than not, the push-pull mechanism is fitted to the right-hand side of the steering wheel, just below the steering wheel. So you push to brake and you pull away to accelerate. Um, so a switching unit is um, what we call a secondary control unit um, and that basically has two functions. So number one, it's used as a steering aid, um, so it's on the steering wheel mounted at whichever side you need it at. Everything's at the touch of a thumb basically. A well, left foot accelerator comes in, in two different types, um, so you can have a floor mounted version or one that's called a twin flip um, and that's predominantly used for people who have got um, lower limb, um, so in the right foot they've, they've obviously either lost movement, function, sensation, anything like that um, and they've only got function in their left, left leg. 
um, so they will use that to control the car. The aim of a driving assessment predominantly um, is, is safety so we want to make sure that the person's obviously safe to be on the road um, given their medical condition and equally if they need adaptations that they're going to meet their needs in a safe, safe and controlled manner. For me personally the most rewarding part of my job is when we see people with adaptations so somebody for example who has not driven for the past five years because they've had a spinal injury or something like that they come to us and we're able to give them the advice um, and information on which adaptations are going to meet their needs. Uh, we, we find that when clients come here they can often be suffering from um, social isolation and we do find that if people can maintain their driving ability uh, or, or, or ability to drive that that freedom that they get from that can be life-changing. Personally, I, I, I have actually been through these assessments uh, with my own condition uh, and had adaptions in, in, in the past and it allowed me to remain um, independently mobile all the way through my treatment um, and uh, the, the independence and freedom that gives you remaining at work, for example, uh, being able to socialise um, is very valuable. We also provide guidance regarding specialist car seats for disabled children to ensure safety and postural support as an estimated 74% of car seats are fitted incorrectly. The car seat assessment will ensure your child's car seat is compatible with your vehicle. During the appointment, the postural needs of the child and the moving handling issues arising will be assessed. Noah's car seat wasn't okay for his posture, so we needed something a bit better. They know what to look, look for, as we, we don't really. For us it is just knowing that he's safer in a car journey, because at the moment with the car seat he's got at the moment, he, he, is, he isn't safe in that, and he isn't comfortable, and his positioning isn't correct, so it'll make me happier, and him a lot happier to. I would highly recommend, definitely. Yeah, and how alone it can feel for parents. So yeah, we would. They've helped us for the second time now. So yeah, it's a very good place and very helpful and pleasant staff. But did you have a good time? Yeah. Yeah. A unique service we offer is help and support for air travel with a disability using the Try Before You Fly service. This service is fantastic because it gives clients the opportunity to do things that maybe they thought would never have been possible and the confidence before they fly to know what to expect and make sure that all the postural supports are available. So basically in the, the Try Before You Fly assessment, um, the assessment consists of a run through of what it would be like to actually transfer the plane, board it, going along the aisles and getting into the seat so the client will know exactly what it's like to fly with a disability. The regional transport hubs funded by the DFT as part of the inclusive transport strategy are aimed at combating loneliness and social isolation through, through the provision of information on realistic transport options. The service is considered as an important expansion of current work of mobility centres as it offers advice and guidance on the alternative to driving for individuals unfortunate to be told their driving career must end. The Driving Mobility Centres also offer support to healthcare professionals by providing CPD accredited training for occupational therapists as well as moving and handling training, equipment review groups and equipment lending service for occupational therapists as well as a Get Going Live event that gives healthcare professionals and the general public the opportunity to test drive adapted vehicles.
Yeah, so in the general assessment service, uh, what we do is we do assessments for a whole range of equipment, ranging from small kitchen gadgets to larger equipment like powered wheelchairs and scooters and stair lifts. So I think our assessments um, are quite detailed and they're very client-centred and holistic because it's the client who chooses what they want to look at when they come to the centre. And I think they benefit the client because they um, will improve their independence and quality of life ultimately. So with a scooter assessment, we'd go into a bit more depth about a client's medical condition and how that affects them and we'd look at their mobility, whether they get any dizzy spells, and also we'd look, ask about their eyesight and if they've got any problems with their eyesight. We would ask a client about their home area, um, the home environment, whether they live in a house or a bungalow, and what the access is like, and what their local area is like, whether it's hilly. And we'd also ask about where they're wanting to use a scooter, are they wanting to use it over a field to walk their dog, or in a shopping centre, and this will determine what kind of scooter we try with the client. So when we're doing the assessment, we'd run through the basic features of the scooter and we get the client to practice the controls like driving forwards, reversing, driving round cones and we've got a, a short route near to the centre where we take clients on the scooter looking at uh, driving along a pavement, crossing roads, at negotiating dropped curbs. This just helps to identify how aware a client is of their local environment and if they have any safe, if they're aware of their safety issues. And at the end of the assessment, we will provide a client with recommendations of suppliers and particular types of scooters. And we would also provide the client with funding opportunities. So there are a range of charities which are able to provide funding um, towards a scooter and we would help the client um, investigate this. So the most rewarding part of my job is working with clients to enable them to identify a piece of equipment that will make a massive difference to their, their quality of life and their independence. And identifying a particular piece of equipment at the right time can help with reducing feelings of isolation and increasing a person's mental health. Um, I could go on, but that's one of the main reasons why I love my job. The best thing about driving mobility, obviously, we all love our cars. You know, we've grown up with it, and and I think the fact that we can we have a process where we can signpost people uh, to remain driving for longer is is a fantastic asset to the country. Uh, we keep people working, we keep people socialising, um, and again, there's other links that we have. We have a very good link with motability, um, and we have a very good link with driving uh, vehicle licensing authority. So between us, we're able to keep people driving. I can't put into words really the feeling that you get when you know somebody leaves here and they've actually got their own independence again, whether it's adaptations or just being able to get behind the wheel again and, and drive anywhere they want really without somebody being with them. They're, um, it's really, really sort of rewarding. So we help people because we care about not just their mobility but their con the confidence and inclusion in society. I think just having the range of equipment on display here at the centre means that people um, can get ideas about what's possible and often people don't think that it might be possible to get in an aeroplane if they've had a high level spinal injury. Um, I had a gentleman who'd been on cruises and he didn't think it would be possible to fly but actually we did the assessment, we provided the equipment, showed him how to use the equipment and showed his carers how to use the equipment and it, would have, it was possible for him to get on a, a flight and, and go abroad. And just having that um, option that things which um, are available for the vast majority of the population will now be available to people who have a disability or a medical condition. Um, and that can make quite a difference psychologically as well. Apprehension of the clients is, is quite common uh, and we do find our clinicians particularly are quite skilled at reducing that apprehension and putting you at ease. We have many comments actually um, from, from clients who do say that they've been put at ease um, and, and they've, they've almost welcomed the experience. Um, even people that have been told well they shouldn't really drive anymore, um, they, they've still welcomed the experience and know where they stand uh, because that's actually something else that the centres offer 
in that if a client has to give up driving, we do look at alternatives to driving. And this is why as a centre like the Willie Merritt Centre has many more services to offer so that we can actually deal with clients that may not be driving but they may require a scooter or they may require a, a, a wheelchair, a, a powered wheelchair. So our uh, clinicians here are, are able to go through their whole life cycle and be able to identify any other assistance that they may need to maintain their independent mobility. Being mobile is not just about your sort of physical ability to be able to use equipment and different vehicle adaptions, it's also about giving you the confidence to be able to fly on a plane or take a bus and get involved in all these sorts of things so you can mentally be prepared and be able to do those sorts of things. Driving Mobility is responsible for maintaining the high standards of delivery via our accreditation system. The main way that we maintain the high standards is, is there's two ways. There's actually the education of the driving assessors that we do insist that the driver assessors attend a university course to level four, level seven, and then every centre, every three years, is assessed for its quality of delivery. Our centre's uh, staff normally contains uh, approved driving instructors and occupational therapists or physiotherapists. As well as driving assessments, Drive Mobility plays an active role on behalf of its members in national and international bodies, working closely with the Department for Transport, Driver and Vehicle Licensing Agency, NHS Trusts and the Police, along with many more valued stakeholders. If you are nervous at all and want to know anything about driving with a long-term condition, um, especially if you're newly diagnosed um, and you, you don't know how to inform DVLA uh, or even, even go about approaching driving again if you've, if you've had to give up driving uh, at any, any time. Pick up the phone and talk to one of our clinicians. They can initially put you at ease and tell you the next step to take. And Driving Mobility has, has uh, the whole country at hand uh, that they can signpost you to any one of our centres uh, throughout the UK. If you have any questions or would like to know more about the Fitness to Drive services, please contact us on 0800 559 3636 or via email at info at .org and one of our clinicians or driving instructors will be able to answer any of your questions and explain the main process involved in a driving assessment. Thank you for your time and if you would like to find the nearest assessment centre to you, please visit our website at www.drivingmobility.org.uk. Thank you.